sentences. Who counted? Where did the number come from? Where's the chain of narration? It's just kalam. They said that Al-Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala used to complete the recitation of the Quran in one raka'ah. The Prophet sallallahu would pray, Allahu Akbar, he read Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, he read Surah Ali Imran, he read Surah Al-Ma'idah, then come back to Surah Al-Nisa, and then after completing the Nisa, Allahu Akbar, and go into Ruku and stay in Ruku for the same amount of time that it took him to read all five of those surahs. But he didn't read all of the Quran in one raka'ah. How could Abdullah ibn Mas'ud say to those people in the masjid, in circles here, circle there, circle there, everybody has his thicker bees, his, his, his rocks. They say, the imam, the emir of the circle says, say, Allahu Akbar 100 times. So they sit there, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Say, Alhamdulillah, 100 times. They would do it, Allah, Allah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, 100 times. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud saw them, he said, hey, Ummat al-Islam, ma asra'akum halaka. How quick it is you people want to destroy yourselves. You people are doing something that the companions of the Prophet are not doing. They didn't do this. This is a sign of your destruction. How can Imam Abu Hanifa in one raka complete the Quran? And he's the faqih of this ummah. He's not in need of that type of ghulu. Lastly, Khwani and Imam Abu Hanifa they said about him, and what is famous about him is that he, radiallahu anhu, used to pray Salat al Isha and Salat al Fajr with the same wudu for 40 years. For 40 years with the same wudu. Is that possible? It's possible. I know a brother, we call him Super Wudu because every time he's with us, he has wudu. He never has to go and make wudu again. There are people who are like that. 40 years, Isha and Fajr, maybe once that happened with us. I don't think that happened with anyone here. I don't think any person here can say that happened to me one time because it's against the way our life is. You have to go to sleep at nighttime. You have to go to sleep at nighttime. And if a person didn't go to sleep at nighttime, he's definitely not a person who's staying up trying to concentrate on trying to keep his wudu. He didn't go to sleep because his child was in the hospital. He didn't go to sleep because he was traveling. He's not thinking about trying to keep a wudu so that he can make fajr with the same wudu from Al-Isha. Those types of statements of ghulu, Al-Imam Abu Hanif are not in need of them. He's not in need of that. He's in need of our dua. He's in need of us cleaning up his madhab. He's in need of us following his madhab the way he wanted it to be followed by saying to his student Abu Yusuf, woe unto you, Yaqub, woe unto you. The Imam Abu Hanifa was giving a talk, Abu Yusuf was talking, writing down what the Imam was saying. Imam Abu Hanifa said to him, way lak, way hak, Abu Yusuf, woe unto you. You write down everything that I say? I'm a human being. I say something today and I take it tomorrow. I change it tomorrow. Don't follow everything, write down everything that I say. Take from where I took from. If the hadith is authentic, then that is my madhab. That's what Al Imam Abu Hanifa is in need of us. Because Wallahi Akhwani Yomul Qiyamah, just as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Isa, and the other people from the Salihin, Abdul Qadir Al Jailani, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the righteous people, Yomul Qiyamah, they're going to free themselves from these Muslims who went overboard in them and attributed to them those things that they were not pleased with. Imam Abu Hanifa never ever requested from the people to follow him to the exclusion of everyone else. He encouraged the people, take from the Quran and take from the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I end with this statement, hoping that you don't misconstrue what I'm trying to say. One of the students of Imam Abu Hanifa, Muhammad ibn Hassan, as Shaybani. Hamid ibn Hassan as Shaybani and Abu Yusuf. They disagreed with Al Imam Abu Hanifa in a third of the whole madhab. They rejected a whole third of his opinions. And there are scholars who collected and gathered the mistakes of Al Imam Abu Hanifa, like Al Imam ibn Hazm in his book Al Muhalla, 
like Al Imam Ibn Abi Shayba in his book Kitab al Musannif, there is a chapter in that book exclusively designated for showing where Abu Hanifa went against the Sunnah in the Khufs, Raf al Yadain, the Wali of the girl, and there are a lot of issues. So don't think I'm here trying to beat him down or talk bad about him. We're trying to touch upon points that we want to elaborate to the community. Don't be overboard. Don't be against Al Imam Abu Hanifa. And don't take him to the degree where you put him above the station that Allah Ta'ala put him in, the station that he was pleased with. Hamid ibn Hassan al Shaybani. He was there with Al Imam al Shafi'i. And Imam al Shafi'i said, I want to ask you a question and I want you to be honest with me. He said, Who's more knowledgeable with the Quran? Our Sahib or your Sahib? Meaning, Al Imam Malik who was the teacher of Al-Imam al-Shafi and Al-Imam Abu Hanifa who was the teacher of Muhammad al-Hasan al-Shaybani who's more knowledgeable of the Quran? Muhammad al-Hasan he said the truth he said your, your, your man your sahib al-Shafi he said your sahib Al-Imam Malik he said who's more knowledgeable about the Sunnah? he said your man Al-Imam Malik is more knowledgeable than Abu Hanifa about the Sunnah the Hadith Al-Imam Malik Amir al-Mu'minin fil hadith Abu Hanifa rahimahullah is da'if in hadith He said, who's more knowledgeable about the statements and the actions of the companions? He said, your man, Al-Imam Malik Al-Imam Shafi said, do you not see that the only thing that remains is Qiyas? And Qiyas is built upon and predicated upon the other three Qiyas is based upon the Quran Qiyas is based upon the Sunnah. Qiyas could be based upon what the companions did and said. But the first two sources, the Qiyas is only used when there's no Dalil. But it's a similar thing in the Quran and the Sunnah, so it gets the same ruling. He said, if Al Imam Abu Hanifa was weak in these other things, then there are going to be problems in the Qiyas. There are going to be problems in the Qiyas, and there were problems in the Qiyas. But at the end of the day, he is still an Imam of the Sunnah and he is an Imam from Ahl Sunnah and those people go overboard who curse him and those people go overboard who describe him as being an innovator and those people go overboard who look at him and his madhab as being faulty. No, he was a person who was abqari. He was an intelligent man, not only intelligent, he was super intelligent, rahimahullah ta'ala and perfection is only with Allah. I advise you to go back and read about what the Urama said about Abu Hanifa, about the nice things when he went over there, the nice things like he used to be a nice dresser, and Imam Abu Hanifa, when he used to give his lessons, he wore the nicest clothes, he wore the nice imama, he wasn't a bum, he was a person who would represent himself in a nice way when he came in front of the people. When they used to ask him, why do you do that? He said, didn't Jibril come to the Prophet وسلم, in a fold that was exceedingly white? And didn't he come? and his hair was exceedingly black. That was his way of teaching us that when you sit in this position to teach, you should look nice. And Imam Abu Hanifa was a very attractive man. He was a medium build individual, had henna. He had a number of children. One of his sons, he named him after Sheikh Hamad ibn Nu'man ibn Thabit. Hamad, he named him after his teacher. And Hamad also was a tremendous personality in the religion and took care of the wasiyah of his father and helped to continue and to perpetuate his knowledge and his madhab. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his greatest name, his ism al-Azam, to have mercy upon Imam Abu Hanifa and to put him in the Jannah al firdaus and to forgive him for any mistakes that he made and to also forgive us for the many mistakes that we made and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the jaza for what he has given to the ummah of al-Islam. And may he make us of those people who are balanced with and in Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. Not those who look at him as if he is Rasulullah or above the Sunnah. He made a mistake. May Allah make us of those people who are able to relieve off his mistake and to take the Sunnah. This is what we wanted to present to you brothers and sisters here today concerning Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. And Allah is A'la and A'lam. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته